now we'll get into our co-main event. This is a super welterweight eliminator matchup. This man originally challenged Gilberto Ramirez for the super middleweight crown back in 2018. He's won back-to-back -back fights, including a dominant decision over Juan Del Angel in May of last year. His record, 27 wins, one loss, one draw, 18 victories coming by way of knockout. Coming to us from the rich fighting country of Ghana. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Habib Ahmed. Thank you very much. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I want to use this opportunity to, come to thank all of you and thank the promoters, everyone is here, the medias. Well, this is just a, a replace, um, I came from replacement, but I'm training hard to waiting for this opportunity to come, and now it's here. So I have to show the world that who is Habib, what hurricane he is. So on a Saturday night, I want everybody to come and see and watch the fight. Thank you. Thank you very much for Habib. And now, his opponent on Saturday night at AT&T Stadium Live on Fox Sports BBC Pay-Per-View. He's undefeated, 15 wins, no losses, one draw, 10 wins coming by way of knockout. He had a very active 2019, including stoppages of then unbeaten Donnie Marshall, Hector Cepeda, and then he had an exciting split draw against Jamonte Clark in Minneapolis. He stands six feet, six inches tall. Most recently, having knocked out Nate Gallimore, he became the first guy and only guy thus far to stop Nate Gallimore live on Fox in August after beating Daniel Lewis in February. He likes to be quite active. This is his third fight here in 2020. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome from Coachella, California. Here is the towering inferno, Sebastian Fundora. I'm happy to be here on such a big card. Uh, I'm glad that PVC put me on another pay-per-view. This is my second pay-per-view of the year. And uh, I'm just uh, I'm going to put on a good fight, make a great show. They changed the opponent, but we're ready for everything. Tabib Ahmed. You now, originally was supposed to be Jorge Cota, now you are in this position. How excited are you to be able to partake in this title eliminator when you literally and figuratively have a tall task ahead of you in the six foot six Sebastian Fundora? Honestly, I've been here one and a half year training hard, looking for opportunity. Because of the, because of the coronavirus, I can't go home back to he locked me down here, and coach told me to train hard, train hard, my, opp my opportunity can come. And this one came, so I have to take it. I've been preparing myself very hard, been sparring with world ranking top boxers in the gym. So I'm very, very prepared for this fight. Inshallah. This is the time to show the world. Thank Do you. Do you think that your experience is going to play a factor in the fight? He's a rising young contender. You fought for a world title before, but what did you learn in that fight against Gilberto Ramirez and the fact that you have an excellent record of 27-1-1 one one with 18 knockouts? Do you feel like your experience will be a significant factor in your favor on Saturday on pay-per-view? Yes. Uh, I'm looking for Nora as Gilberto Ramirez because Gilberto Ramirez is tall and he's cyborg too. So if I'm looking, I'm looking for Nora like him. And I've been sparring tough southpaw and tall boxers in the gym too. Like I said, I've been in gym, training hard, looking for opportunity, and now this one came. So I know Fundora is a good boxer, good, great boxer. You know how to throw his hand. But I have to, uh, have, we have a plan to came, so I have to follow my plan to win the game this Saturday. Sebastian, for you, originally it was supposed to be Jorge Cota standing across the ring from you. How do you assess Habib Ahmed on Saturday night? Well, um, when we were training for Cota, we trained for everything. So switching the opponent was not a problem for me. He's still a right-hander. He's, he's a, an aggressive right-hander, so I'm, I don't think I'm a problem at all. Tell us about your preparation because, you know, you've been quite active here in 2020, which I don't think many fighters, if any, can say the same thing. But you are 
very cognizant of wanting to stay active over the course of your young professional career? Yeah, it's just uh, you don't take breaks. You, you can't take breaks. We took a week off, and we went back into camp for this one. And uh, with the job, you take a break too long, you'll get fired. So this is, this is our job, and we'll, we'll, we don't want to get fired. <laughs> Sebastian, you have a very crowd-pleasing style. You like to stand and trade. It almost feels like there are moments where you could potentially make the fight easier for yourself with your long reach and your physical advantages, but instead you want to stand and trade. Is that a part of you just loving and having a zest for combat? Of course, of course. Growing up, we always, we always fought. We, um, we had shorter fighters always rushing us and stuff, so we had to learn how to fight. Either learn how to fight or, or get stronger. We end up doing both, so that's uh, just something I love, you know? With the run that you are on, especially, you know, you only have one loss, but do you almost feel like now is the time for you to seize this opportunity? Because, you know, everything in life is about timing. Do you feel like the moment is right for you to be able to take your career to that next level? Yes, yes. Everything has its time. And only one time is come. Opportunity come at one time. So I'm training. When I came here in the United States, I'm being in camp training, waiting for opportunity, like I said. And now the opportunity come, and I know I have the win on Saturday because I've been training hard for this opportunity to come. I know it's a good boxer, like I said, and I have to listen to my coach in the corner, and he see what uh, Fundura uh, gonna done, and he will tell me what I have to do, and I think I'll win the fight. Sebastian, your promoter, Samson Lukowitz, who has found the likes of Manny Pacquiao, Sergio Martinez, along with David Benavides. He told me when you burst onto the scene a couple of years ago when you fought in Minneapolis, and you had that exciting matchup on FS1, he's told me, this kid is special. And for you to be able to, you know, work with, with Samson and, and the things that he's been able to see out of you, at the age that you are at, you're in your early 20s, did you think that you would be this far along so early? Um, yeah, uh, it's just timing, I guess. Um, I just go with the flow. Everything my team does, we talk about it always. We, we go back after the fights, we talk about what we want to do next. Uh, and I guess, yeah, the time is right, you know. If, if, if we're making this far up this fast, then why not take it, you know? Habib, how will the fight unfold? Yeah. I've been preparing very well. And like I say, if I, if I listen to my coach on the corner, I can win the fight. So maybe it will depend how the fight is going on. Yeah, it depends how the fight is going on. But I know I have, I have, I know sure I have a win on a Saturday night. Thank you, Sebastian. Uh, yeah, uh, just one of the, one of the greater fights in the card. So, so I, I trained very hard. He trained very hard. So we we plan just to make a good show, and uh, I plan to do my job like always and win.